Hey guys, why is React.js so popular in 2022? Let's take a quick look at this article I found on Quora. I'm gonna give you my two cents as well. And uh, yeah, so this guy, Brian Knapp wrote it. He says, uh, why is React.js so popular? React.js is popular for three reasons. You take any one of those reasons away and it doesn't get popular. Before I get into it, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, it's popular because of these technolo technological reasons. Probably not. Um, anyway, let me read the article and I'll give you my point. So here are the three big reasons. Boom, boom. It was made by Facebook. It solves for SPAs because it's popular. So SPAs is short for a single page application. A single page application is a style of web app, if you will. Let me give you a little history. It relates to all this. It teaches you about the cycle of things and development. So back in the early 90s or mid 90s, when web apps started to explode, and I was there at that time, um, SPAs were called a model one architectures, model one as in the number one. And after a certain period of time, the community, the developer community said, model one is no good. You have to go with a different model. They call it model two. Model two is the MVC model, the model, the view controller model. Anyhow, this video is not about saying model one is better than model two. Uh, no. The point I want to bring up with that is that you'll see in development that cycles happen things will fall in favor, out of favor. It's very normal. I've seen it many, many times. So he continues, when React.js came out, the most important reason that anybody cared is because Facebook made it. That gave it what Robert Cialdini calls social proof. I don't think he spelled his name properly. Uh, Robert Cialdini, if you don't know, nerdlings, he's a very famous psychologist. He wrote a very influential book called influence, pun intended. Uh, my major in university was psychology, so I'm aware of him. And he really was the, uh, he was such an important figure in psychology. Anyway, he discovered what influences people to take certain actions and how they perceive reality. It's very, very telling stuff. And in fact, Cialdini is one of the sources of information that I use to put together my lizard wizard course. Anyhow, that's another story. Facebook is one of the most important and valuable technology companies. So if it's good enough for Facebook, a lot of other people will trust it, even if it sucks. I don't know if he's saying it sucks or not, but he's talking about the psychology of how people look at things. This is one of the oldest and most important reasons for technology popularity. As the old saying goes, quote, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. That was a real thing in the tech world for decades. Social proof. There's a little bit more to it than that. So with regards to nobody got fired uh, for buying IBM, that also gives you insight into the way corporations work. You see, people who go work for corporations typically are risk averse, meaning they don't want to take too risky um, choices in terms of a career. So they go work for large corporations. Also, people who tend to thrive in corporations, they tend to be very good at getting along with the herd. Not disparaging, but it's just you have to understand there's a psychological character set, if you will, or a set of character traits uh, in terms of people's psychology that you find given a certain milieu, a certain environment in which they uh, exist. So for example, I like to use this as an example. At one point in my martial arts, I used to do boxing or I would do, I was training at an MMA gym. MMA gyms, boxing gyms, bring in a certain type of personality. On the flip side, I did Aikido, uh, which is a different type of, we'll, we'll call it a martial art. I did Aikido for a while, and I went to a couple of schools in Aikido, and that brought a totally different type of personality. So the, the average person doing Aikido had this psychological set of characteristics. And the average person in an MMA or a boxing gym had a very different psychology. 
That's just normal. Think of an MMA gym, the average MMA person versus the average person taking yoga. That's an extreme example, but you can see how if you go to different environments, you'll find it attracts a certain psychological predisposition or a set of traits. Same thing with big organizations. Big bureaucracies will attract certain types of people, whereas entrepreneurs or the entrepreneur life rather will attract a different psychology of individual. So when they said nobody ever got fired for buying IBM, a part of that, besides the point he was trying to make in this article, the other part of it is that um, large corporations fill or fill with people who don't want to take risk, who like systems. So they're not going to take risk typically hiring some upstart firm, some small company where if something should go wrong, the blame is going to be on them. So if they just hire IBM, which was the biggest at the time, or among the biggest, they would go, hey, IBM messed up. It was IBM. How can I be blamed? It was IBM. They don't want to risk. So this is a little tip, a little side tip for people getting into freelancing or starting a business. The bigs, meaning the big companies, typically don't deal with the small companies. They're only going to deal with the big companies simply because the people making those buying decisions, they don't want to take any risk. So they're going to go with the established players, the IBMs, the Microsoft, the Googles, that kind of stuff, simply because if something should go wrong, they can go, listen, I just went with one of the main, one of the leaders in the industry. I can't be blamed. Anyway, that's just a, a little side tip for you guys if you're looking to get into business. So he continues. That was the real thing back in the tech days. The uh, Nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. And he refers to it as social proof. Social proof, by the way, is Robert Cialdini theory. The idea that a lot of times, one of the major factors that causes us to make a decision, pro or con something, is whether or not we see social proof. That's why testimonials are so important on Amazon and even my own stuff. I tell people, okay, you can listen to me talk about my mentoring program or my course material, but I say, go check out all of my reviews. That's why all of my reviews, by the way, I moved them onto Google because I feel that was a third party source of the reviews. So it gives it credibility. And you see all these people, uh, almost 200 now, 170 something people now, just on Google, just, just on Google, besides other places, have given me very positive reviews. So that is social proof, which will give you much more confidence in my product, which kind of makes sense, right? So he continues. So Facebook makes React JS and it takes off like crazy because Facebook was using it. And that's true. There's no question about that. That's a big part of it. If I had created React and launched it on my own blog, nobody would have cared or used it. So you don't get React JS popular without it coming from Facebook. That's step number one. And there's a lot of truth to that. There's a lot of truth to that. Now, Makes me wonder, uh, now that uh, Facebook is, uh, reputation is like tanking very hard, well, Facebook's now meta. Uh, and I wonder if that's going to affect React's popularity going forward. That is something interesting to consider. Not that it really matters, because if you're a true professional developer, you don't matter. You don't care about the stacks you use or the technology. You just use whatever you need to use for the job. Step two is that it solved a major issue with SPC, SPA, single page applications. Yeah, so step two to make React popular is that it did solve some major problems. At the time, React came out, SPAs were the hot new thing because of Backbone JS and Angular. I worked on some early SPAs and it became clear just how much of a mess they were. React JS was a step forward at the right time. It organized some of the mess and people liked it. See, that's something about, I had mentioned earlier in back in the 90s when you had Model 1 versus Model 2. Model 1, of course, is the SPA, early iteration. The problem with that was it was very messy. So Model 2, which is the MVC approach, where you separate your code into three, the views, the controller, and the uh, business logic section. MVC Model 2 was designed to separate out the code into logical areas so that you can uh, simplify the code base, have multiple individuals work on different sections. It was a way to solve the problem of Model 1. 
And I guess React was another way to solve the problem of model one as well. You put out React at a different time, say seven years before, and it would have been a dud. Nobody was running SPAs back then, really. And so it would have been a nothing burger type project, maybe some cool bit of internal R&D or whatever. But fixing single page JS apps was a huge deal at the time. Still is, I guess, which leads us to step three. It's now popular because it's popular. It's the new jQuery. So it's a few years old, but it's jQuery today. People now use React.js because other people use React. And that kind of circular reasoning is good enough to keep it popular for a good long time. You see that with many other technologies, by the way. React is now being used where it shouldn't be. I have no comment on that. I haven't looked into that, so this is his opinion here. And will be applied to things where isn't where isn't not good. Why let me try that again? React is now being used where it shouldn't be and will be applied to things where isn't not a good solution. That's not a very good English, but whatever. Simply because everyone is using it and since it's so good at one thing, it might as well be used for all things, right? Yeah, I see that all the time. Something I've been, I've taught uh, many a times in the past, I talk about just because a technology is there, it doesn't mean you should use it. Technologies should be used only when they need to be used. Don't go looking for code to write as I teach. Don't go out there looking to use a tech just because it's popular. If it makes sense to use React on a job, use it. If it doesn't make sense to use it, don't use it. Popularity has a network effect that creates more popularity. Once it hits a certain tipping point, React started to eat the world. The most ironic part of all this is that when it comes down to technical merits, React isn't popular because of the technology. It is popular because of social proof, timing, and network effects. There are were other technologies that could have been React and didn't get big. So it's important to realize but we are people, we are people are the reasons, I think you meant to say we as people are the reasons we do things. Rarely have anything to do with the technology, even in the technology world. Go figure. Uh, anyway, so this is this guy, got a lot of uh, 260,000 views. I figured it would be interesting. The network effect for open source tools is incredibly important though. Sure, it starts with social proof, but then it gets bubbled out effect of improved libraries, increased browser support, et cetera. Anyway, so there's a bit of a discussion here. I'll leave a link to this. I just thought it was an interesting way to introduce some of the things I talked about in this video. So am I dissing React? No, not at all. I'm just saying that this is very true, what he's saying. Now, of course, React had to have merit technically. It had to be able to do the job, so it did the job. But uh, me one, me thinks, as you've seen with so many libraries over time, libraries tend to lose their luster over time. You know, jQuery is a big example. The worst example is Flash, of course. Flash technology, Flash was once huge. Now it's dead, of course. Um, so I wonder with the uh, Facebook as it's losing its mojo and its goodwill in the marketplace, I wonder if it's just gonna have a negative impact on React going, going forward. That said, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. If you're a good React developer and you know your web stack well, your HTML5, your CSS3, and JavaScript, doesn't matter. You'll just pivot to the next hot technology if and when it should come out. So if you're interested to learn more about software development from the 169-year-old nerd, Uncle Steph, that's me, take a look below. I have my mentoring program. It's uh, pretty, pretty well-received. People like it. You're going to learn everything you need to know to get a job, to build a freelance career, to even start a business. It's all there. It's an organic, self-paced learning model, very flexible, but you get the best of both worlds. You get the flexibility of remote learning, but you also get the support, live support via our Zoom meetings and other things as well. I invite you to take a look below. All right, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye.